Today I'm going to talk to you about an animal encounter. So as part of the nature awareness sort of concept we've been presenting over the last bit of a while, in terms of a series approach to looking at nature in a more holistic way, a more, a more focused way and a much more immersive way. One of the things that can really, really bring you into that connection space with nature and the natural world and the ecosystems and the individuals that are within it is when you get the opportunity to have a direct nature encounter. Not with a, an animal in a zoo or your pet dog or even to some extent maybe the, even the birds in the backyard that you feed at a feeder. But we're talking about an absolutely wild animal. Now I happen to be lucky, I'm living on a, on a rural property and actually in the middle of nowhere. So I get a lot of animal encounters. And I'm going to share one of those with you today because it's very important that you see how to interact with that stuff in a, in a, in a positive way. Because some people will look at what I'm dealing with here, which are some snakes, and see them in a very negative light. Snakes are just very misunderstood creatures. Now these guys are carpet pythons here in southeast Queensland and they're a beautiful animal. We have a lot of issues in terms of management of our livestock here because we have ducks for food as we live off the grid and one of the things that loves ducks is carpet pythons. So we're constantly just picking them up, relocating them to a further a field area in the bush and letting them go again. And that's what we're basically doing today. Okay, so I'm a qualified snake handler. A good friend of mine from many years back, a guy called Bob Cooper, um, trained me extensively when I was still living in Western Australia on how to handle snakes, all of the reptile species. So unless you've got that kind of background, I highly recommend you just leave them alone. Yeah, I'm dealing with venomous snakes on occasion here, um, eastern brown snakes particularly, who are very, very angry kind of animal to deal with on some occasions. And so snakes can be rapidly go from something very benign to something very dangerous very quickly. So just respect them, give them their space, and when you understand their psychology and what's going on in their, their world, you'll start to have a much more beneficial experience with them. So when I let these guys go again here, you're gonna see that the first thing they're gonna do is wanna just move away. That's the general thing I'd expect. Um, they might stop and assess their options and try and re reorientate themselves once they come out of the container, but they are basically going to just want to move away from what they perceive to be danger. They're also in an exposed location. So they're going to want to move to a covered location, somewhere they can feel hidden, camouflaged, and back at peace again, so that they're back in their normal. And that's what's really about learning from these snakes. We're learning what is their normal. So we're looking at the perspective from another species. And that's an incredible opportunity we get. So you can do this kind of thing with the small lizards and stuff in your backyard. Although, you just keep in mind that lizards have their right to be where they are as well. If for some reason you're, you're doing some gardening and you injure a small reptile or dis, dis, uh, dislodge something or move him away from his normal state of being, you can just pick him up and move him away and you can understand what's going through his head to some extent. As best we can anyway as a human. So we can empathise with their position and what they're trying to achieve. Okay, so that's the other thing I want to pay attention to, and we're going to take some images of, are the tracks that this particular species leaves. Uh, leaves on the, on the substrate behind him. So it ties in tracking nature awareness, which is really what this is all about us at the end of the day. So we're going to look at the way this particular species moves. I mean, it's a constricting python. To constrict them. So it has tighter coils. If I was looking at the same tracks on the ground from something like a dew guide, a taipan, or a, and a brown snake, they're a much more straight line layer of spore on the ground. So because they're moving faster, they're much more of a run their prey down type of predator. Whereas these guys are an ambush predator. So they sit and coil and they use this constricting action of their bodies to prevent an animal from breathing any further. So every time the animal breathes out, they tighten up. Breathes out, tightens up. Breathes out, tightens up. That's their strategy for neutralizing their prey. Whereas a brown snake, for example, or any of those other species, obviously has a powerful venom that will disable its prey pretty well instantaneously. And then they consume it whole. So let's have a look at how those snakes are. So down down here you've actually got two snakes, two similar sized pythons. This one's a little bit bigger on the back here. 
This one's less big. And what they're doing at the moment is they've just been released from the container and they're just reorientating themselves here. So, and they're not aggressive, they're just assessing what's going on. And in a minute, they'll make their way off, probably in respective directions. So we'll just let them have their moment and then we'll see what they're doing. And the snake's flat, and there they go. Never gets old seeing them just move off back to freedom, back to doing their thing. Incredible, efficient animals. Reptiles, in fact. So on the spore that I leave behind, you can see the compact substrate where it's been packed down by their body weight the structure of their underbelly is all clearly outlined there and then their method of movement is very much in and out in that curved way moving through so that's the way of locomoting across the ground which is their constrictive ability yeah incredible so this is a bigger Member of the same species, so we've had a big run on snakes at the moment. But this is the third one plus the fourth one yesterday. This guy again has been re released from the container, and you can see him in that flattened body shape. The flattened body shape is him trying to make himself appear bigger because he's obviously feeling not comfortable here. He's breathing, and you can see that breathing coming in and out, in and out. See how the white of the belly has not been orientated back upwards again? So he's feeling a little bit vulnerable, a little bit stressed. The tongue's coming out to sniff the air. He's trying to figure out what I am, why I'm here, why he's here. He was in a dark place a minute ago, and now he's out on the ground, and it's daylight. So we'll give him a few minutes just to orientate himself, and he's going to move off as well in his own time. I want to see if he makes a different type of of track pattern on the ground as he moves off. In the meantime, just enjoy his company and appreciate the beauty and the majesty of this particular species. Can you see the colour of his spots here? Yeah, yeah you see the, the yellow and the creamy colour. And see the see the his belly scales. They're about one centimeter across. See here, his belly scale from there to there. There to there. It's only small. Most of the venomous species, because they move more across the ground so fast, they have a big, long belly scale across there, like that. Okay. So sometimes when you find, you know how we find their skin? When you find the skin, you can tell with what generic species it is, whether it's a venomous snake or a non venomous snake, or more, more importantly, if it's a constrictor. Because this scale here, this one here, there, there is small because it's wrapping around things. So he doesn't need that big scale, he needs a small scale. Yeah? See how looking at you? Yeah, he's smelling. Yeah. He sees the world with smell. And, and he see, he's seeing you as a, as a heat picture. So let's, let's let him move off so he could go in there. Yeah, no, it's just he can only go, he can only, he can only lash out that far. And yeah, it's because he's feeling threatened. What should you do? You need to do that. So now he's got his belly scalp all facing down. He's much happier. Yeah? He feels probably a little bit less vulnerable. And he'll start to move off. So that's that, that's one, two meters long maybe, two and a half maybe. So how was that? Pretty amazing thing to watch, isn't it? Watching a snake move off like that, watching how they look around, watch how they, they just travel across the substrate is an incredible experience. I'm glad I was able to share that with you and I hope that that will just get you, get you out of some state of fear in terms of what these guys are all about. They're not there to hurt you, you're not part of their food chain. 
there's no benefit in them attacking you. Right? So if you understand the psychology that's going on there, you understand what is driving them to do certain actions, you can just work with them, avoid them, and be a healthy and happy cohabitor of the natural ecosystem around them. And that's all part of being nature aware.